G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday morning here in Australia. Market is slowly but surely moving up. But what I'm really waiting for is tomorrow. So when it will be Sunday over in the States. Obviously it's sort of Saturday night-ish. Very late Saturday night over in the States. And over the last couple of weeks at least, to maybe a month or two, really Sunday has kind of been the bloodbath day. It's when we've seen the biggest losses so just waiting to see what's going to happen tomorrow. Have we really found the bottom or is this just going to be, you know, a, a, another, not a fake out as such, but, you know, everyone gets their hopes up and then uh, it dissipates. We really will have to wait and see. All right, BTC dominance still around about 58%, 58.3 to be exact. ETH dominance is dropping to 11%, was 111 uh, and gas 91 so that's good that it's under 100 but it's still not great way too high all right what we can see is there seems to be a bit of a bit of a mixed bag here so there has been some green in the 24 hours but there's also been uh, some red and look in the one hour at the moment at least in the top 13 coins it's all just red so again Sunday is sort of coming it's Sunday here in Australia but you know very kind of sort of late Saturday night maybe even possibly Sunday morning and really for it'll be tomorrow Australian time that we're going to find out whether the Sunday bloodbath that has been happening for a while now continues to play out but let's have a look what's pumped has anything pumped is probably uh, a good question to ask all right we still do have coins that are doing quite well so anchor doing quite well helium bitmax pancake swap Ecomi, Dow, Solana, Arweave again, Sirecoin, Maker. So look, we've had some pretty good gains in here and really we've had at least probably six that have been, again, anything over 15% in 24 hours for me, I consider a good gain. And I mean 40%, that is uh, really amazing. And again, for me, if something is pumped that much in 24 hours, unless this is like a long-term hodl, uh, I'm probably going to take some profits there and particularly if it's pumped 100% in seven days and I'm probably almost guaranteed to take some profits um, again unless it's something that you just believe in long term then fair enough and again I never offer financial advice I'm not a financial advisor I have to say that every video just to make sure I don't uh, confuse anyone and also get kicked off YouTube because uh, I am not a financial advisor all right so look some good gains there uh, and again you know you can look at some of these even over seven days i mean 74 percent for pancake swap and 18 percent. but tomorrow is the well today here in australia is sunday but tomorrow when the states open uh on the monday it's usually the day before the sunday where we've had the really big sell-offs so at least for the last sort of couple of you know probably two or three months maybe uh i would say sundays have been the bad days other before that, they were kind of coming maybe on the Friday or the Saturday, but they've been coming on the Sunday. But now that I say to look out for it, it's most likely you know, we've already seen it. But we'll have to wait and see. All right, what about losses? Has anyone really lost? What's really not done too well? Okay, nothing's uh, been hammered, which is really good. I mean, look, flowed down 12% uh, for the week, but I'm going to say they probably had a pretty good month before that. Voyager token uh, has come down a little bit, but still up for the week. Oh, excuse me sorry look eight percent that's not really too bad at all and again eight percent is bad if you've lost eight percent like legitimately lost you bought sort of at the top and if it continues to go down excuse me but like for instance if you bought harmony say two weeks ago and you're still up 42 percent you're probably not going to be too worried so we've got a bit of a mixed bag there there's definitely some coins uh altcoins that have done quite well uh, and there other, there's other coins that are just kind of still slowly losing a little bit like Sushi, you know, down 20%. It looks like it's on a continued downward spiral. Uh, Uma, and look, there's a lot of coins like that. Crypto.com, uh, I would yeah, I don't know about a majority, but at least in my portfolio, most of my coins are going down now at the moment. I don't have too many that are going up. Really, Filecoin was one that was going up, but I don't. Uh, let's go back. I don't think it's even in there. No. Nah. It might have gone up a few percentage, but that's it. All right, what I want to do is follow up with some charts that we were looking at the other day, but let's start with Bitcoin. All right, so here's Bitcoin. Again, we had this channel break out. We had a channel break out, and now we have, 
well this is a wedge it's not a channel currently we are in a channel so it's not really shrinking or expanding it's just kind of staying the same and again this is what i drew in yesterday so it came down hit the top of this channel came down and you can see we're almost right at the top of this channel now so i'm really waiting to see are we going to break out or is this just going to roll over and if we have a breakout and it could be here could it be something like this where it is a fake out and then we still come back lower time will tell that's the only way we're going to know i have no absolute um you know idea of what's going to happen this is just what i think is probably going to happen at the moment i think we might roll over come down and form one more low and again it's when we come down and kind of you know touch this old sort of resistance and use it as support because we might not we haven't used this as support so we've lost that so now we need to come down and find out where there's some confluence and we've got a bit of confluence here again we can use these as well and right through here and we can see we almost touched it there and that's where the 50 day moving average was so are we going to come back and break the 50 day moving average and then maybe again start to use possibly something like this so the $46,000 mark as support or do we come back down and start to use somewhere down here like around the $39,000 support which is roughly where the 21 week exponential moving average is so I'm waiting to see and as I said for me I'm not making any big moves at the moment I'll still dollar cost average in uh, when I get my pay I don't have any issues with that because I'm never going to be able to pick the exact top and the exact bottom and while we may come down and test 38,000 I think we are still in the midst of a bull market and this is just a little bit of sort of chopping and changing for Bitcoin to form a base because this looks real all over the place in this short term these are the dailies but if you were to kind of really zoom out then this is just a little bit of possible consolidation before we then make that next move up and I don't know if it's going to go to 90,000 uh, might only go to 80,000 the 20,000 dollars ranges have really been where we've found uh, issues getting through so again kind of around the $40,000 range here we can see that uh, we uh, touched it dropped down before we finally broke it the $60,000 range again we almost got there here this is about 58,000 fell off got just over it we got to about $62,000 and now we're coming down so that's what I see playing out is it's going to take a bit for us to get above it and we're possibly going to come up towards sort of 80,000 and I think we're going to find more resistance there. And as I've said in previous videos, I think once we get to around the $100,000 mark, I think we find big resistance there. I think it'll be, you know, it might get just over 100000 or might be more something down around, you know, $95,000, $96,000, where I think there's going to be massive selling and we likely drop back down to nearly where we are right now. Again, that's just my thoughts. It's not financial advice. You've got to make your own decisions and, yeah, do what's best for you. All right, let's move on. Synthetics. So we're going to have a look at some of the coins that I'm really big on and I really like. So we can see synthetics had this long, drawn-out kind of process here, and this is against BTC, and it used old kind of resistance as support. That's what it became. This was sort of old resistance, couldn't break above it, had a bit of a fake out, was resistance again, then it had this big, uh, like sort of cup and handle type thing. So again, this is where it was forming a base. It broke out, it came back down and retested it, and then broke out again. Now we don't quite have a cup and handle here, but what we can see is old resistance has become support. So what we're looking for here, and again, this is against BTC. So if it breaks out above this green line, it's, beat, it's beating BTC or just kind of holding, uh, staying with BTC when it's traveling sideways. Then it broke out against BTC. So it was beating BTC and now it's being beat by Bitcoin. Bitcoin's outperforming and it's falling down. So what I'm watching for here is do we get a breakout and if we do, is it going to be something like this where we just kind of travel sideways and just kind of keep up with Bitcoin before it has its next big breakout? Because I do think it's going to have another big breakout. It's just when. And for me, the level I'm looking for is I would really start to jump into uh, Synthetics Network 
and about 19,857 Satoshis. That's if it gets down here. There's no guarantees. It could break out, you know, before. Maybe it's kind of reached its point now where it's going to use some old resistance here. And this is now going to be support and it breaks out and find its way up. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but this is just what I'm looking for. So if you're looking to get into B to, uh, into Synthetics Network, this could be a good spot around about here. Again, it's very hard to pick it exactly. And this is on the daily. You know, you can go down into the hourly and the four hourly and the 15 minute and all the rest of it to try and work it out. But it's been following this pattern a few times. So it's gone down, it's hit this mark. It did sort of fake out a little bit like it was gonna go lower and then broke back out and then it just traveled sideways. So it was keeping up with Bitcoin, beating Bitcoin, losing against Bitcoin. And is it gonna come back down here? And again, it might not get down to exactly here, but really anywhere from sort of around about where it is now down to uh, this sort of $19,000, $20,000, 20 Satoshi uh, level, I think is not a bad entry point. It's just whether it's the best entry point or not, I don't know, because it is possible that it goes down and retests this. I just don't think it's likely though. But that's Synthetics Network, so that's what I'm keeping a lookout for. All right, Secret Network. Again, very, very interesting. It's a bit like a cup and handle. So here we had this kind of big basing period. We had this blow off top, and now the handle is coming back down. And at the moment, look at this. It has used old resistance and also support as new support. So it was resistance here, it was support here, it's come down and it seems to be bouncing off this nicely. So is Secret Network now getting ready for its next leg up? Or look, it could just travel sideways for a while, like we just looked at uh, Synthetics Network. So it just travels sideways, basically keeping up with Bitcoin for a while before it breaks out. But either way, if you buy in at this price and Bitcoin is going up in dollar value, and this is trading sideways, that means it's keeping up with uh, Bitcoin's dollar increasing value. It's just not outperforming Bitcoin until it does something like that. So that's what I'm looking for against uh, Secret Network. Again, outperforming Bitcoin, losing against Bitcoin, but once it's traveling sideways, this means it's just keeping up with Bitcoin because these are all against Bitcoin. So for me, Secret, ne Secret Network is looking pretty good at the moment. Now again, could this roll over and fall down lower and maybe come back down and test some levels down here? Absolutely, or more probably like around about here, I would say. But again, you don't have to time it exactly right. If you get in around about here, and we've had a bit of a breakout here, but again, these charts aren't always exact this you know you could move this uh, chart somewhat but even if we get in here and it comes down to here so we lose a little bit in satoshis before it then makes its next level up so be it you don't have to pick it exactly but again you just need to consider maybe it's going to come all the way sort of back down to here or even somewhere in here no one really knows, but I think this is looking pretty good at the moment. It feels like it's found its uh, support level. Again, we got pretty close here, and it, there's no more big dips at the moment. It did just roll down, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, so the graph network. We looked at this the other day. Same thing, blow off top, comes down and almost uses uh, old uh, resistance as support. It stayed a little bit above it, but that's all right. Broke up. Okay, big blow off top. Now, again, it's coming down and it looks like it's using old resistance as support. Again, it is possible that this breaks down and it starts to use something more around here. So we could lose a few Satoshis, that's absolutely possible. But I still think this isn't a bad position to get in. Again, you don't wanna sort of wait to get in here to find out it never gets right down there. It literally maybe only comes down half a step here before it goes on another big parabolic run like that. So for me, Secret Network is looking pretty good and this is something that I'm dollar cost averaging into. And I will be looking to get uh, dollar cost average into Synthetics Network if it comes back down to here. Uh, for me, I've got a reasonable position in it. So if it just continues to go up from there, then I think there's other things that are better value at the moment because it's got such a high market cap. Doesn't mean it's no good to invest in, but I just think I would want it to come down to again around about this 20,000 Satoshi level for me to sort of really try and build another position in it because that's where the maximum opportunity is. All right, link. So 
link we can see it just kept bouncing off this uh, line constantly for a long long time and we've finally broken below it so what this says to me is that based on previous history link is probably a really well, I won't say a really good buy, but I just think it's undervalued at the moment. It's really been underperforming compared to Bitcoin because, again, this is against Bitcoin. So for such a long time, we can say from the 19th of May, sorry, 14th of May 2019 until only recently, which is the 8th of December 2020, it was outpacing Bitcoin. It was staying above it. Now it's lost against Bitcoin, but it has broken above this line. And it's come back and retested it a few times. So I get the feeling like Chainlink may, again, come back and use old resistance as support because it's been support here, it's been support there, support, support. So again, even if you're getting into Chainlink now, I don't think this is a bad spot to get in. It's just you need to accept that, look, it could come back down. So you may lose some Satoshis and it needs to retest this. And again, it could be a bit of a fake out like these. It breaks down a little bit lower before it then starts to make its next way up. But there is a lot of confluence right here. Resistance, 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 support, 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 uh, and a little bit of resistance, support, 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 support. So it really does feel like this is the line in the sand where I think a lot of people will be jumping on. Well, not a lot of people. It'll depend whether they understand charts and uh, fundamentals of investing and things like that because there's just a lot of confluence here. I really do think if Chainlink gets anywhere down to around about here, it's going to be bought up very, very quickly and very aggressively. I know I will. So I'm not looking to jump into Chainlink just yet, but it's not to say it's not a bad place to get into. You just have to accept that it might go lower. Again, it might not. There's no guarantees it comes down here. Maybe all of a sudden up here now becomes the support because you can see that's what's happening a bit of resistance bit of resistance bit of resistance 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 support 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 so maybe this is the new bottom no one really knows so again getting in here wouldn't be so bad but just understand that it may come down and have to bounce off around about here or again maybe even just a fraction lower somewhere around about here but that's the thing no one can time the market and knows exactly where it's going to bounce because if they did, they would just absolutely be killing it. And yeah, I don't know anyone that basically you know, knows how to pick winners all the time. So again, really for me, anywhere from here down to around about here is a good buy-in point. So yes, I could buy in. I'm not buying in at the moment. I've got a reasonable position in Chainlink. But if I do start to see it come lower, particularly down around about here, so kind of the... Uh, 40,480 Satoshi level, uh, I will be buying in. Absolutely, I'll be looking to get into that, and particularly if it gets down to around about here. So the 36,700 sort of Satoshi level, 100%. All right, Aave, very interesting pattern that kind of tends to just kind of repeat and repeat. So it gets to a blow off top, comes down, gets to a blow off top, comes down, and it is using old was uh, old support on this time so again this is uh, a bit of resistance it's resistance and support but this one was mainly uh, old support it dipped down down below so it was a bit of a fake out in the opposite way though everyone thinks i oh, know it's going to go lower and then it jumps back up but it came back and used this as support again so now i'm waiting to see is Ave getting ready to do that again because what we can see is it got caught in this channel uh, descending wedge, I should say, not a channel. And look at that. Used it as support. I think it's it's rolling over here, still stuck in this uh, descending wedge. And these are quite often bullish sort of chart patterns, particularly in a bull market. I mean, in a bull market, anything can be bullish, really. It doesn't matter what the chart pattern is. It's just a bull market. But look at this. I think Aave could be a, a good buy here. And again, there's no guarantees that this is exactly where it bounces from. It has here. It could come down and maybe it has to use this, but that's still not that bad. You just got to accept that you're going to possibly lose some Satoshis for a little while there at some stage, as long as it's in a bull market. And I believe that we still are. This is just a healthy correction retracement. It'll likely make its next leg up. So that's the maximum opportunity really is if you know, you're know you lucky enough and you can get Aave down here, sweet, awesome. 
But what happens if it doesn't come down that low? It doesn't even come back down to here. It has found its bottom. So again, for me, Aave is looking pretty good. I'll probably start to dollar cost average into it, but I'll just accept that, look, we may have to come back down to around about here, 4,485 Satoshi-ish level, somewhere around there. And again, from 6,000, so that means we've got to lose 2,000 Satoshi. And in dollar value, Satoshi, uh, 2,000 Satoshis is not too bad, but that's just the way it is um, when you're you know, looking to invest and looking for good buying points. You're unlikely to pick it exactly, you just have to be there about. All right, so they're the coins that I'm bullish on and I've kind of built some positions in and I wanna uh, continue to build positions in them if they get to a good buying point, and look, some of them are, particularly Aave I think is looking quite good at the moment. Uh, and again, the graph is looking pretty good at the moment, but I am willing to accept that if I buy more graph now, we might have to come down to around about here uh, before it starts to bounce. I might may have you know charted this a bit wrong. And look, it's also possible that it has to come down to around about here. No one knows exactly where it's gonna find support uh, and all the rest of it, but this is looking pretty good at the moment. It seems to be holding here, but uh, this one's looking pretty red. But again, it is just after midnight over there. So this is still a very early candle and it's every possibility that it bounces up. And then we can take this and get that to extend out to there. So again, this may hit this, another candle or two, but for me at the moment, the graph is looking like it's getting ready to break out any day now, but it may break out and travel sideways for a while. All right, moving on to some stories that I found very interesting. So NFTs have just been going absolutely mental. And look, an ad for Uniswap just sold for over half a million dollars as an NFT. <sighs> I don't know if that's going to be worth anything in the future. I really don't. I, I hope it is for whoever bought it, but for me, I'm just, yeah. I again, I've already explained this. I'm not into NFTs themselves. I don't know enough about art. I'd likely get it wrong, buy something and just, you know, basically lose all my money. I'm more interested in, uh, buying into the infrastructure so again engine uh, ethereum i'll have to look at getting back into central land i really kind of miss that you know maybe chilies and things like that but half a million dollars for an ad that seems like a lot of money i hope they've made a wise decision but i think they did say they donated it to charity there so well the people who sold it donated the money to charity so i suppose really whether it's worth anything in the future or not is I guess maybe a little bit of a, irrelevant because it was donated to charity. So there is a good side to it. All right, so Fidelity, we spoke about this the other day, they're putting out an ETF, but could this be really bad for Grayscale? Basically Grayscale have had what is the equivalent of a Bitcoin ETF, because there were no ETFs allowed, so they found a way to uh, divide up uh, Bitcoin shares and sell them uh, through Grayscale kind of going around the SEC and look, they haven't been fined for it or anything, but if these Bitcoin ETFs suddenly get approved, it could cause a lot of uh, pain for Grayscale. So anyone who's invested in the Grayscale uh, Bitcoin you know, trust fund, whatever they call it, I think it's a Bitcoin trust, uh, you could be in for a little bit of pain. But again, if the Grayscale a, a Bitcoin uh, ETF is very similar to a Bitcoin ETF, why would you have to sell? But just something interesting and for people to look out for that there could be uh, a bit of a sell-off of the Grayscale Bitcoin uh, trusts to get into a Bitcoin ETF. But for me, I just don't know why anyone would wanna do that. There'd be tax implications when you sell and then to buy into basically something that's in, uh, exactly the same, well, not exactly the same, but very, very similar, yeah. I'm not sure, but something to keep an eye on. Right, Filecoin. So it surged 25% over, overnight. Uh, it hasn't done that uh, on this one. Uh, I think it's retraced a little bit, but Filecoin has been doing quite well. Uh, and it's something that I'm really interested in and we'll have a bit of a read. So while big name cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum heaped disappointment on their followers this week, I don't know about heaped, but yes, they've definitely, uh, you know, going through a healthy correction, Filecoin has bulldozed its way into the top 20 with an overnight price surge of 25%. I think my Filecoin 
uh, is doing quite well at the moment. It's up a good couple of hundred percent from when I got in. I thought I got in at a good price and it went down a little bit and didn't do anything for a while. And I've learnt my lesson to just simply hold and I've held and now, yeah, I'm up a couple of hundred percent in my file coin. But again, I'm just wishing I had have bought more, but you know, what can you do? I wasn't, you know, 100% sure. So what is Filecoin though? Filecoin is a native token for Protocol Labs' new decentralized file sharing protocol. It's kind of like a blockchain based solution to the potential, uh, cor uh, a blockchain based solution to the potential corruptibility of cloud storage giants like Amazon, Microsoft or Dropbox. So these are like silos. They, you know, hold all this data uh, and they sell the data to other people at uh, quite expensive prices and then it's whatever data they are happy to hand over so really we want decentralized data where everybody has access to it and that's what filecoin uh, has to do with and graph is along a similar kind of vein not exactly uh, the same but very very similar they kind of go hand in hand that's why i bought the graph and the file together i really like what they're all about decentralized data and things like that all right cosmos so the Sentinel network, a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, uh, bandwidth marketplace that supports the Sentinel D VPN application is now live on Cosmos network. Sentinel is the first uh, project that focuses on offering privacy at the network level to any blockchain or D app, uh, said Dan uh, Edelbeck, co-founder of Exido, don't know how to say that, which contributed to the development of the Sentinel D VPN protocol. Once integrated, these blockchains or applications will be able to provide their users with both privacy and censorship resistant. Simply, the purpose of the Sentinel ecosystem is to empower universal access to the internet in a trusted and provable manner. Sentinel Network allows anyone to be able to sell their bandwidth on its marketplace. Developers can utilize the Sentinel protocol, but are built with Cosmos SDK, to build applications on both public and private that use the Sentinel Network's bandwidth marketplace for a DVPN applications. So decentralized uh, VPNs. Uh, love this and another, another really good app that's sort of coming out on Cosmos Network. They've been slow to kind of build, you know, there's been some good stuff on Cosmos, but just not a whole lot. And this is just something else that makes me glad that I got some Cosmos. Cosmos hasn't been one of my best performing coins and when it did uh, perform sort of well, I did sell a bit, but I've got, I think, at least half of the Cosmos I originally bought, which again is not a lot, but still it's some. All right, so why Tesla's decision to accept Bitcoin as a payment is unlikely to be followed by other companies. And really it's the volatility that people are worried about. But that is why Elon Musk is one of the richest people in the world. He can see past that. He literally is looking five to ten years into the future. So not a lot of people are going to use their Bitcoin to buy Teslas, but some will. And he knows that whatever price they pay in Bitcoin, it's likely to be worth, you know, who knows how much more in the future, but likely a whole lot more. And that's what these other businesses can't see and that's why they're not going to want to accept Bitcoin because they can't handle, you know, that maybe for four years they'll be at a somewhat significant loss, 50, 60, 70% of what they, uh, what it was originally worth when they took it in. Uh, they just can't handle that over a couple of years to then understand that in, again, four or five years time from whatever price they got it at, it's the most likely going to be worth a whole lot more. But again, there's no guarantees and they just can't see that far into the future and they can't handle that kind of volatility. And look, in all fairness, it wouldn't matter who suddenly starts to accept Bitcoin. They're not going to have too many people using Bitcoin to buy stuff. I think the word is out. People are generally understand that Bitcoin over the long term is going to outperform just about anything. So yes, you know, particularly like Lamborghini, I think, and Ferrari accept Bitcoin. Because I think they even see it. Look, yep, someone might buy a, you know, a, the top line Lamborghini with Bitcoin at the peak of the cycle. And then for four years, they might lose, you know, again, 50, 60% uh, of the value of that Bitcoin. But in four or five years time, they will then have likely made that money back and some. All right. At what point? Bitcoin price, will Satoshi Nakamoto become the world's richest person? I don't think he can anymore in all fairness, 
but they're saying Bitcoin price reaching $182,000 per Bitcoin would probably make Satoshi Nakamoto the richest person on the planet. I'm not sure that can actually happen anymore considering how much Bitcoin Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy have, uh, Tesla and things like that. But it is interesting. Uh, they were saying that he has, you know, he, she, they, whoever it is, likely has around about a million Bitcoin, $182,000 per Bitcoin, and they got a million of them, would likely make them up there with the richest person in the world. And they do go on to mention uh, Jeff Bezos, and he's worth about 100 and, uh, sorry, where is it, 1.81 billion. Elon Musk is worth 1.63 billion, so almost as much as uh, Amazon, but he personally, allegedly, has a lot of Bitcoin and also uh, Tesla and likely SpaceX and all the rest of it have a lot of uh, Bitcoin as well. So I think he will be hard to beat. And likewise, Michael Saylor as well. I think uh, if the price goes up to that, then they start to uh, likely jump up ahead of uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he, she, they are. All right, last but not least. So just in, Bitcoin critic Norwegian billionaire Austin uh, Stray... Splatten buys Bitcoin. Now, this is very, very interesting when you read this. So, Mr. Spetlin, a Norwegian billionaire investor, has reportedly bought Bitcoin as well as invested in the country's largest Bitcoin exchange just weeks after deeming Bitcoin a nonsense currency. This is what you need to be careful of. People will say one thing and they're doing the other. This is be, he said this because he wanted the price to go down while he was trying to buy it. And now that he has bought it, he's saying all of a sudden, no, this is really good stuff. So Spetlin, during the DBN Invest Conference on the 18th of March, has criticized Bitcoin for its excessive use of energy and even called it hostile. However, during a recent interview with a local media house, Spetlin's tone on Bitcoin changed drastically, especially after investing in the Norwegian crypto exchange uh, Miriex. Hopefully I said that right. But this is what I find interesting. No one wants to be the first, but they don't want to be the last. And here's one of the reasons he changed. So this is him saying it. When I also read that uh, Cornell Ing Roki, I'm going to absolutely butcher that, I'm sure, had gone into Bitcoin, it was quite obvious. He can't bear to see that Rokul makes money and not him. Uh, and that is why he got in. So someone else over in Belgium suddenly invested in Bitcoin and was making all this money. So all of a sudden he's in. And this is literally how it starts. Trickle, trickle, and then flood. There is big money coming to uh, cryptocurrencies in general, not just Bitcoin. They are all going to start in Bitcoin. And then once they get their uh, feet wet in Bitcoin, now unfortunately some are going to get really burnt because they're going to buy in at the top and likely panic sell at the bottom and it's going to take them a long time to get back in. But if they get in early, but you know, early enough and they see Bitcoin do really well and then they have a look at the other coins and see how they're outperforming Bitcoin, that's when they start to jump into this uh, that space as well. The, the floodgates are literally starting to open, but it's exactly like floodgates. Ever seen floodgates of a dam or something open? Initially, there's only a little bit of water coming out because it's only just opened a little bit. And then as they start to open wide and wide, that's when the water really starts to pour. That is what is happening with cryptocurrencies now. This retracement that we're having is just a, it's part of a healthy market. The big money is still yet to come. We spoke about this a little while ago. There's maybe only 5% of big business in Bitcoin at the moment. I think that's growing and I think, uh, again, that's a couple of weeks old, but that's what they were saying. There's still 95% of big business yet to get into Bitcoin and they are coming. They will have no choice but to come. Whether it happens in this bull run or again, maybe the next bull run because they're probably already spooked and have maybe done some research and think they can get in at a much lower price at the uh, bottom of the next bear market. I'm not sure whether that'll play off. 50,000 could literally be uh, less than what the bottom of the next uh, bear market may be. No one will know, but the floodgates are coming. All right, that's it for me. I want you to do me one favor. Can I please just get you to go down and hit that like button? If people hit that like button, it gets my videos out there and I want more people to see my material. I'd love to maybe one one day, excuse me, make a living in cryptocurrency doing your sort of YouTube stuff. 
Let me know down below, do you think the floodgates uh, haven't really opened yet? Do you still think there's a whole lot more money coming? Or do you think we might have sort of hit the peak and that we're going to see uh, some sort of severe downside from here? I'd love to know your thoughts down below. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train, you're outperforming the market. So well done and congratulations to you. And I'll see you next time.